All right. You are so upset with us. If blockchain were never invented, what would you be doing right now? Uh, definitely not having as much fun as I currently am. This is way better. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs>
I don't want to say like underground or kind of like agorist, you know, applications that... Well, we are at the top of Agor Valley right now, yeah. so... Yeah, so you just have these applications that, you know, people can kind of use and, and the government can't really dictate the terms of how they're used. And why is that important? Uh, it, I mean, it, at the end of the day, it comes down to freedom. Freedom uh, to trade with each other. Um, you know, we're, we're in this for prosperity and economic prosperity. And a lot of people believe that, myself included, intervening in, in, the, in the marketplace and in, and in people's transactions is a source of a lot of our economic problems. Mm -hmm. Do you see Bitcoin becoming a world currency or do you think it'll just have a specialist use? And uh, for it to become a world currency, what do you think the biggest hurdles are? Yeah, I, I would like to see it become a world currency. I think the biggest obstacles to that are political. Um, it's kind of, you know, you have the, it's like a competing currency. And, the, and the, of course, the government doesn't like competition. It doesn't want to see people compete with it. Um, so whether or not it's ultimately successful kind of de determine, depends on the government's reaction to it and then the people who are using Bitcoin, their reaction to that reaction. And so it's, it, it'll be an interesting dy dynamic to see play out. Um, as far as barriers to adoption, I guess this is just for, for currency in general, but I guess a lot of these other applications, we still have, the technology is still very inefficient and it's using it in ways that is kind of like very, let's say lightweight and, and you can, something you could put on a phone uh, or an app like you could, you could write for a mobile phone. Um, that you can to where you can get it into the hands of everyone and they can get all the properties that we we like without having to need like third parties to serve as like a gateway to the application because a lot of applications that we see coming out today they rely on these third parties to act as sort of like gateways to the peer-to-peer -peer network and that kind of um that removes a lot of the benefit to the end user all right it's going to be continuity errors now. How is it working at the forefront of the decentralized marketplace scene? I mean, Open Bazaar is really a central point in figuring out how to have free trade and allow people to buy what they want. It's definitely exciting. At the same time, it's a little bit frustrating because it's we have so many challenges to build it when building decentralized applications that like centralized platforms don't have to deal with. And a lot of times those challenges manifest themselves in like, let's say, a user experience that's not what we want it to be. And so we have to, we have to work like overtime to try and get, get the user experience on par with more centralized platforms. And it's really difficult. And, and then, you know, her, you know, adoption suffers because of it and that sort of stuff. So you have to, for all decentralized applications, we have to put in like a lot more work to try and get the, the UX where it needs to be, to try and onboard users, get them familiar with, you know, how do they even use cryptocurrency? It's just a lot of hurdles to getting adoption. Right. What is the most popular cryptocurrency being used on Open Bazaar at the moment? I think it's Bitcoin still. I mean, we only have right now Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash and Zcash. And the Zcash integration is, um, you have to use a full node right now. So like, I have very few people are doing that. Um, so yeah, it's just the real choice is kind of between Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. And I think, I think more people are using Bitcoin. That wasn't the case earlier when, you know, December, January, when fees were really high. Um, I think it was flipped. But, um, but yeah, right now it's like fees have come down on Bitcoin. So people are back to using that. And hopefully we'll have some more currencies available in the next couple months. What do you see in the future for Bitcoin and blockchain tech? From usage, I think we, if we can get it to the point where we're able to get apps into the hands of people that... Um, are like let's say close to as secure and as private as let's say running a, a full node on, on the network like a full peer-to-peer -peer node um, that's when it starts to get like really disruptive because that's like the full power of the technology and so the more people who are using that I think the, the, har the, the harder the government's job of, of regulating it and kind of controlling it and that's when it starts to kind of have a life of its own. Well, I share your high hopes for Bitcoin, and uh, I'm really grateful for you chatting with me here today. Thank you very much. Thank you to you too. Subscribe to the channel. Yeah, subscribe to Naomi's YouTube channel. <laughs> Best endorsement ever.